Hey everyone, this is a little tutorial on using Google Meet. If you haven't used Google Meet yet, um, it's a great virtual environment that you can uh, talk to your students remotely, work with your PLC, or just do a one-on-one -on -one with pretty much anybody just as easy as you would do a phone call. So Google Meet is what we use for our domain. Um, I'm gonna let you know now that there are gonna be some updates coming in the next week or two. Uh, as a result of COVID-19, Google knows how many educators are working from home, so they're making some adjustments to what the Google EDU suite looks like. Um, so I will point out what some of those changes are. Just know that those buttons aren't quite there yet. So we're going to start by going to something simple as Google.com, and you're going to click on the app launcher, what I like to call the waffle, and you're going to scroll down and find Google Meet. I'm already signed in, but you would need to make sure you're signed into your Google account for EHT. Um, if you are joining a meeting that already exists, you're gonna hit the same button that I'm about to hit right now, but I'm going to start it as if it was a brand new meeting. So the important thing in, is here is two parts. One, you wanna keep this as simple as possible. Um, you don't wanna use any kind of special characters. Those things do not work. I recommend using your name, calling it room, calling it the time of day. This is actually gonna be the meeting code that you would give your students or the rest of your group to join. Now it is possible that if you have not used Google Meet yet, you will get a pop-up that says you need to allow your webcam and your microphone to work. Because I've already done this, I'm not gonna get that pop-up. Um, but again, if you are using Meet for the first time or this is your first virtual experience, I recommend testing to make sure that your microphone and camera work before you go into the room. I also would recommend that if you're in a, a somewhat noisy environment or there might be some background noise, that you use the headphones that came with your phone. Um, two reasons. One, they're accessible. Most people have them. Also because it has a built-in microphone, if you look very closely, that has a microphone in this headset. Um, and all you'd have to do is plug it into the back of your computer or wherever your uh, headphone jack might be. And then you'd be able to block out the background noise and also have clear audio as well. Um, of course, it'd be great if you can have better lighting. Put a lamp next to your desk where you might be working or sit by a window. It just makes for a more comfortable and, and real environment if you do that. So moving on, I'm now going to hit join. Um, it would let me know if there was other people in the room. It won't show their names just yet, but it would notify you if there are people in there. And I'm going to hit join now. Now, this is um, another way that you can get people to join your classroom and not use that nickname. You can give somebody this URL link. Um, I find that sometimes just easier if you copy and paste that into an email or put it on your Google Classroom. It just kind of, kind of skips a step to do that. And if someone does not have a device but still wants to join the room, as long as they have access to a phone, they can also dial in with this unique phone number and PIN. Keep in mind, though, that phone number and PIN will change every time, just like it would for any other um, online uh, virtual experience. So remember that you'll have to copy that, both the URL and the phone number, every time you want to make a change or you're coming into a room for the first time. If you're adding people, such as adults, who have the email address, you can go ahead and type in or click the people that you talk to the most. It will send them an email automatically. But remember that the students do not have email addresses, and the best way, again, is to either give them that meeting code or to just take that link and paste it somewhere that they can find it. I know I'm the only person in this room, one, because I'm doing this as a demonstration, but the other way you can tell the number of people that are in your room is by clicking on this first icon right here, and it'll show and populate as people enter who is talking and, and what their names are. Um, keep in mind, if someone is joining via phone, it won't have their name attached to it. It will have part of their phone number instead. So you may want to tell if you're working with students to announce who they are so you can kind of keep track of whose phone number is who. Some other features I want to bring to your attention are the captions feature. Just like if you were doing this with YouTube, you can turn on the, the captions. There is a little bit of a delay. And as you can see, sometimes it's not completely accurate, but it is a nice tool that does work in real time. Um, I would let your students know that they can hit that captions button if they need to be able to read along. And just like that, I'll turn that off. Now, if you're presenting a Google slideshow, a website, or anything else related to your computer screen, you can hit present now, and it's going to give you two options. 
One is if you want them to go to a specific window. So let's say you have Google Slides as a separate window on your computer. You can have that specific window that they have access to. Or if you want to share your entire desktop, which is probably the easiest thing in most cases, you'd hit your entire screen. And you're going to see it's going to give you a preview of what you're going to be sharing with people before you hit share. And you can demonstrate it. The students would be, or the rest of your teammates would be able to follow along and see what it is you're sharing with them. Um, some other features I wanted to bring to your attention are the muting options. So as of right now, you can technically mute individuals, but they can unmute themselves just as easily. Um, and that has been a problem, as you can imagine, with a, uh, a virtual environment with 20 students in the room. So there will be very soon an option for administrators to mute everyone, and then the participants would not be able to unmute themselves. So that's a few. Uh, one of the biggest things that people are looking forward to seeing that change happen. Um, another thing too that has been a problem in other districts is when the teacher goes to leave the room, some, te some of the students would not leave the room with them and continue a conversation offline or online as you might say. Um, so coming soon there will be an option that after the administrator leaves the room, the rest of the participants would be kicked out. So that is not currently the case. I would recommend staying online until you know that everyone is gone, um, at least until that feature becomes available. I know this is a little bit of a learning curve, this virtual environment, but if you have any questions while you're clicking through, feel free to reach out to me. I can set up a Google Meet with you to make sure you're comfortable with the tools, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side.